Hello, today I would like to show you how I create mood in my paintings and explain my art process and how I create mood in my painting with colors, lighting and texture. If you want to see full painting process, I will put the link in the video description. Have a great time! Uh, so firstly, I always want to gather references before starting my paintings. I usually pick from 3 to 10 images of a scene or object that I want to paint, which means that if I want to paint golden hour landscape, I will pick images that go well with this light terrarium. I will find them mostly on Pinterest because it's easy to adjust what content it shows in my feed. After collecting reference photos, I start with my painting with quick rough sketch, which I will use as a base to create a line art in this example. I want to note that while painting landscape, after making a sketch I usually go straight to color and fix my mistakes later. But while painting characters, I, I go to creating a line art so that I can fix uh, the perspective and anatomy mistakes before starting coloring. Ok, uh, I finished my line art. Uh, while clearly line arts, I usually try to use different line weights so that it looks appealing to the eye while constantly flipping a canvas to fix my mistakes. Sometimes these sudden fixes can help to make painting more readable and beautiful. Okay, moving to the contrast. Uh, so contrast is a concept that anyone can understand and incorporate into their paintings without extensive knowledge. I like to think of contrast in four categories, light, edges, size and texture. Light plays a crucial role in setting the mood of a painting. It can create or break the overall beauty of your artwork when considering light we we think about the values of colors and the interplay of light and shadow. A useful guideline is to give the main subject of your painting a wider range of values compared to the other parts. Contrast in values, the difference between light and dark is essential for creating depth and dimension. Strong value contrasts make objects appear more three-dimensional and establish a focal point. Size differences can bring about a sense of perspective and visual interest. Keep in mind to paint smaller shapes against larger ones and aim for simplicity and clarity in your shapes. This will greatly enhance the quality of your painting. Brushwork and texture are also means of achieving contrast. Varying the thickness, direction and density of brushworks adds fascinating textural contrasts. Combining smooth and textured areas, you introduce visual appeal and tactile interest to your artwork. Additionally, contrasting brushwork techniques, such as using loose, expressive strokes alongside controlled and detailed areas, create an engaging interplay and visual excitement. While contrast can be impactful, it's crucial to maintain harmony in your painting. Strive for a balance between areas of contrast and areas of unity to avoid overwhelming the viewer. Experiment with different levels of contrast and find the right balance that aligns with your artistic vision. Coloring is one of the most enjoyable aspects of painting. Before starting a painting, I usually have an idea of the colors I want to use. However, I often make changes along the way to match desired mood. Thinking about colors before selecting values is important. If you're unsure what about the colors for your painting, you can begin by painting in grayscale. Professionals like David Villegas uh, often start with grayscale because the transitioning from grayscale to color is easy using blending modes and strong values make paint stand out. Colors have the ability to invoke different emotions, warm colors such as red, orange and yellow can create a sense of energy and excitement. On the other hand, cool colors like blue, green and purple can bring about a feeling of calmness and tranquility. Remember that combination of colors is also significant. 
using colors that contrast greatly can add drama and tension to your artwork. Colors that are adjacent on the gallery, like blue and green, create a harmonious and soothing effect. As a beginner, don't hesitate to experiment with colors. Understanding color theory and developing a sense of color takes time. While some artists prefer the desaturated approach, I personally enjoy working with highly saturated and vibrant colors. Ultimately, it's your choice. Try different combinations and observe how to make your view. There are no right or wrong choices, just have fun and express yourself through color. For this painting I wanted to depict a sunset scene, which always comes to mind when I think of summer in the station. With that in mind I knew I would be using plenty of reds, oranges and yellows, along with the blues to create a contrast between colors and make the piece more visually captivating. Lightning and shadow play a vital role in making paintings look realistic and creating a spe specific atmosphere. They bring subjects to life and add depth and emotions and make the art artwork convincing. Understanding how light interacts with objects is essential for achieving impactful and believable results. Shadows are crucial for creating a sense of depth and three-dimensionality. They define the form of objects and provide a feeling of space within your painting. Understanding how light interacts with different surfaces and materials helps you accurately depict shadows and bring your subjects to life. Take note of the direction and intensity of light in your reference and imagine the scene. Lightning and shadows also greatly affect uh, the mood and atmosphere in, of your painting. Bright and direct lightning can create a cheerful and energetic mood, while soft and diffuse lightning can evoke a sense of calm and tranquility. Try experimenting with different lightning ang angles, color temperatures and shadow intensities to convey specific emotion in your paintings. For Instance, warm and golden lightning can create a cozy and nostalgic atmosphere, while cool and blue toned lightning can invoke a sense of mystery or mel melancholy. Firstly, I want to emphasize that brushwork is a personal aspect of painting and everyone has their own way of using brushes. Avoid the mistake of trying to replicate others exactly. When I watched tutorials by Marco Marcobucci, I would research for his brushes and imitate his techniques, but the results were always disappointing. Instead, find a few brushes that you enjoy using and play with them. Over time, your efforts will pay off and you will develop your unique painting style and brushwork that is special to you. Brushwork and texture are essential for giving your paintings character and visual appeal. They add quality to your artwork, creating the illusion of different surfaces and materials. Understanding various brush techniques allows you to express your artistic style and bring your paintings to life. Brushwork and texture can also be utilized to portray form and depth in your paintings. By varying the thickness and direction of your brush strokes, you create an illusion of three-dimensional objects and surfaces. Don't hesitate to experiment with different brush techniques and textures to develop your own distinct style. Try combining various brush strokes, layering different textures, or even using unconventional tools to achieve interesting effects. Explore the interaction between smooth and texture areas in your paintings, as well as, as the contrast between the tiled and loose brushwork. Thank you for watching. It's my first time recording a tutorial, so it is kind of a mess, but everyone has their first time, right? And so, would you like more tutorials about perspective or anatomy? If so, let me know in the comments. Uh, recently, I created my new uh, Instagram account, so make sure to check it out. 
Uh, this is how uh, the finished piece look like. Thank you for watching and see you next time.